So structure function is really a pretty basic idea that just says the structure of something is related to its function. It's kind of one of those very intuitive things, but it's, it's the basis of anatomy and physiology and integrating them. Um, and it helps to understand each. So it's something that would just important to just address now and see some examples and we'll see examples of it um, as we go. Example of, of non-anatomy and physiology is like a hammer. Um, here's a hammer that I knew it. A hammer and a certain shape to it. Um, that doesn't quite look like that, but it's designed to carry out a certain function, right? To hammer nails. And someone designed a hammer with that in mind. Its structure, its anatomy, determines its function. And its function is reliant on its on its structure. So if you break the hammer, um, they're usually metal. It'd be pretty hard. Let's say you melt down the metal and your hammer then like is not in alignment, like it's crooked like that. I don't know if you ever try to use a broken hammer, but like it doesn't work so well. So its function is influenced by alterations to its structure. So this is very relevant for the anatomy is the structure. Physiology is the function and they're very closely related. We're gonna study them together this semester, anatomy and physiology, um, in order to help us fully understand both. They can't be fully understood separately. Um, and this idea of structure function is key at every level of organization. So from the molecular level, um, protein is a big one, protein structures, um, all the way to organ structure, um, and or organ system, and even organism. Um, every single level of organization is important to think about structure function. Okay, so let's see a few examples besides the hammer. Here an example of um, heart tissue. So the anatomy that we're going to learn about is the chambers of the heart um, right over here. So anatomy or structure, the valves, the heart um, cells, even the tissue layers, Etc. That's the anatomy. The physiology, which is the function of the heart, is the primarily the, the blood pressure generated, um, but due to this structure, these blood pressure changes that you'll learn about in the spring, maybe pressure changes on the left side, the right side. They're different on the two sides. They go up and down. Um, that is because of this anatomy, this anatomy has evolved to be able to carry out a certain function. It's impossible to study them independently. Another example is ear anatomy. So um, these little bones right here are super cool. Um, they vibrate. So hearing works because sound waves come in and actually it's different than the air pressure. So air pressure is pushing on this tympanic membrane, which is basically like the head of a drum. That's why it's called your eardrum. This is your eardrum. So that gets hit and vibrates, right? Same design as a drum head. Um, when that drum head vibrates, these little bones vibrate also and transmit that signal to the inner ear. Um, so example of structure determining function. Oh, the little bones are called the, the malleus incus and sapiens, hammer. Um, so they're, they're like designed like little hammers to, to be knocking like that. So it's cool when you see examples of um, anatomy that are similar to what we have, what we designed as humans. There's a reason for that. Because it's like a good design, often. Okay, so these are two examples of like um, organ level. This has structures in the organ. I also want to give you an example of um, one more example at that level and then a molecular level. So here's a nice example, and you can really see um, joints. 
the joints are um, articulations between two bones. And when you think of a joint, often you're thinking of synovial joints, which are very movable. So your elbow is one that can move a lot. So you can control that. So the design of this interlocking system here with this head of the humerus sitting in with the ulna, allowing it to hinge, it's like the hinge of a door. Um, that structure determines the function of the elbow. The elbow, just like a hinge of a door, can't move much. I mean, you can try it like side to side. There's a little bit of movement there because it's just um, actually better that way. <laughs> um, good no ligaments are, it, right, there's a little bit of movement there. But the joint is not designed to move. But right now, I'm moving my arm to do that. The joint is not designed like your shoulder, which had a lot more axes it can rotate. We'll talk about joints a lot more later. But the point here is the elbow joint is designed to move in a certain direction, like a hinge, and it's called a hinge joint. Um, it's structured determines the function. Okay, the molecular level is here, um, protein structure. So th these are examples of chemical, chemical messengers. So they're chemicals that are messengers. They're also called ligands. Ligands are things that bind other things. This is a membrane receptor. And based on the structure of this receptor, it is able to bind a certain ligand, right? There's going to be a matchup. So the structure of this protein is going to determine what ligand it can bind. So you can see this little space right here. And you can see it here, right? Um, these match up because of their structures. So at a molecular level. The second thing I want to point out here is the binding of this. What do, what do you think it does? The binding of this ligand to the receptor causes something to change in this receptor. Change in the structure of the receptor. In this case, that receptor is opening and becoming an ion channel so that stuff can move through the cell. There'd be different examples of other things that happen when a ligand binds the receptor, changing its shape. But it's based on these two things matching up. Number one, number two, this change in this protein, right? A membrane receptor is a protein. The, the shape, the structure of the protein determines its function when it changes shape opening versus closed, on versus off, doing this versus doing that, etc. We'll see that a lot. Change in protein structure. 